out to you guys, this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays, and today on The Snapshot, it's all about laying them out real fast when we take a look at the Volness. Now, you can pick up the Volness's blueprints in the market for 20,000 credits, just do be aware it does require a Mastery Rank 4 to craft. However, if that is not quick enough to get it into your hands, you can always pick it up in the market pre-built along with the Weapon Slot and Catalyst for 200 plat. Just do be aware it is also available in the Gera collection for 825 plat along with a slew of other glass-based weapons and Gera herself. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Okay, so the Volus is a little bit different from the rest of its counterparts. It being a lightweight slash based hammer, the trades in the category's traditional heavy damage for an insane attack speed. This combined with the fact that its supplemental stats are weighted towards status chance, the Volus allows you to inflict proc quickly and consistently, pairing quite well with Condition Overload. On the other end of the spectrum, while its critical stats fall on the lower end of the hammer roster, it definitely still feels worthwhile to add a crit mod or two into the mix, especially to encourage a bump in those defense bypassing slash procs. And as for the build, I feel like we're keeping within the same consistent story with all of the glass-based weapons. We're going to be running a hybrid crit slash status build focusing on viral, and that's mainly because of the fact that it pairs extremely well with all of the slash procs that we'll be able to inflict with this weapon. The only real point of contention here is organ shatter, and that's mainly because the Volness does not necessarily have the best critical multiplier on it. It's own and it is kind of like a little bit of a feels bad moment because you're like ooh, I just you could have given me just a little bit more and it would have felt better um, however you can toss in something like the buzz kill weeping wounds to kind of play around with it maybe even a third status elemental mod uh, personally after playing around with it a little bit I did find organ shatter to be the best at least specifically for me in my situation um, but if you wanted to go ahead and toss a prime breach on this it actually isn't that bad as it gives you a full six meters to play around with as opposed to something like the frag or Prime that only gives you like four meters of the prime breach, which definitely stings. Regardless, let's go ahead and see how this build performs. All right, so the most interesting thing that I wanted to know about the Volness is mainly the fact that the Volness does not function like a lot of hammers out there. Ah, oh, there it is. The thing that I've been dreading is the finisher attacks with Gera's passive, but we'll get to that in a hot second. Um, no, the one thing that I wanted to point out with this is mainly because of the fact that a lot of the hammers that we have out there um, are all about swinging in really, really hard and kind of like dealing big chunks of damage. The Volness is not that hammer. The Volness is all about speed and inflicting a bunch of status procs and having your slash procs eat away at the enemy, having condition overload, power up those slash procs, and just any of the subsequent strikes that come along with it. And that's really where the Volness excels. If you try to use it like a typical hammer, and I know that everybody loves this combo, Everybody loves this combo, but in all honesty, it's not the greatest combo specifically for this weapon. However, a really, really good combo for this weapon is Gera's passive, as you've seen twice over now. Um, the great thing about this is because of the fact that its attack speed is so fast, combined with the Prime Fury or a Berserker, whatever you want to put it uh, together with, uh, when Gera blinds an enemy with this, um, the finisher the finisher animation is so, 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 so quick, which is very, very nice. Um, it's almost kind of like one of those things where you're like, did you think about this, DE? Was this something that you had in your head when you're plotting this out? Because legitimately, it's, it's a really good pair when you think about it in that essence. Um, but if we're just looking at this as another hammer, and you know, if I'm gonna be frank with you, I did go ahead and compare this with some of the other hammers in the category, most specifically the Arca Plasmor, because that thing is an absolute beast. Um, this doesn't quite measure up. However, the one thing that I do want to put with this is, number one, gorgeous hammer. Number two, completely different take on a hammer. As you can see, those fin those finishers, I'm telling you, it's, I feel like, I feel like that's where this weapon excels, especially with that goddamn passive. So part of me is like, D.E., y'all planned this, didn't you? You planned this. Um, but yeah, no, I was just gonna say that this just does not function like a traditional hammer. And if you try to make it, um, if you try to make it out like a traditional hammer and try to play it like a traditional hammer, it's just not gonna perform as well. I know that I was actually playing around with the Fragor Prime and the Arc, like trying to do it a little bit comparison to see exactly how it feels. And those ones do feel more like traditional hammers. This one actually feels a little bit like, almost like a pole arm, kind of? Um, regardless, I think it's a cool and different take, it's unique, and you know what, it's, it's a nice way to kind of mix things up a little bit and change up the way that something in a category functions, you know what I mean? Kind of just like, like a sushi burrito, that's what this is, this is like a sushi burrito over the group. It's the same thought process, it's a something you wrap it up, there's some meat in there, there's some rice in there, but it's not quite exactly the same. I'm enjoying it quite well, I still, you know, would prefer like a normal kind of like sushi roll, but uh, 
you know what, I'll take what I can get. So all in all, I don't think that the bonus is the best within its category, and if I'm gonna be frank, it's not even the best slash base status hammer out there, I do still think that it's a nice breath of fresh air into the hammer roster. First and foremost, it is super fast, secondly, it's absolutely gorgeous and pairs extremely well with Garrus passive. In addition, it does have a fairly high riven disposition, just in case you want to go ahead and play around in that arena. Regardless, that about does it for the facts and figures, but if you want to chat a little bit more, stick around for the gameplay. Alright, so the one thing that I had to do um, when I was using this weapon was really get used to the fact that it does not play like a typical hammer. Um, I actually went ahead and played around with a couple of different stances because I wanted to see exactly like um exactly how it functions with different stances mainly because of the fact that a lot of the stances are built for like the traditional hammer which is like high damage um high damage and single shots right so i was like okay um i was like exploring all of the different stances i wanted to see exactly what we could do and i mean i still ended up using crushing ruin which is you know the standard one um that a lot of people go for but i definitely wanted to check out all the different combos in the other groups because of the fact that a lot of them felt really slow and i mean it was slow but you smacked them hard with the normal hammer but since that's not the case with the bonus, what you're really trying to do with the bonus is just uh, hit a bunch of times over and over and over again and kind of um, make sure that you stack up a lot of the damage from condition overload, you know, inflict a whole bunch of different procs and then go in and deal the rest of your damage by layering all of those different statuses. So that was kind of one of the things that definitely threw me for a loop when I first started kind of playing around with this weapon, is to actually explore different combos rather than the standard ones that we tend to use over and over and over again, you know? Um, and I found that to be really interesting because it changed up the gameplay of this weapon a lot. It was no longer just kind of like that standard, oh, all right, well, I'm gonna use the same combo, um, the same slow swing combo over and over. It kind of forced you to change your gameplay and maybe even made you reconsider uh, the stances that you had on it. Because legitimately, um, if you're kind of just using all of these really, really slow stances with this specific weapon, what ends up happening is you end up kind of hindering its performance because of the fact that it does not perform the same way that other hammers perform. And, I thought I think that's cool. It's like it's like a positive side and a downside for the weapon at the same time because you know it does make you play around. It does make you explore um, different things. And with a game like Warframe where you have a ton of different options, it kind of like behooves you to try out different things. You know what I mean? To not necessarily stay within the same status quo. And that's what I really ended up liking um, with the bonus. Is number one, um, it lets you mix up your gameplay. It, it didn't even let you make up mix up your gameplay. If you wanted to be good with the Volness, you really did have, it like, forced you to mix up the gameplay. And sometimes, you know, when we play the same types of weapons over and over and over again, we kind of get stuck in the uh, in a certain rut, and we only end up playing them in one specific way. So, it's nice to kind of see things mixed up, and to kind of, like, flip around the identity of certain weapons. And the thing is, previous to this, um, a lot of the hammer weapons out there just really did fall into that um that same category everything was like everything was like normal speed or slower with a big chunk of damage and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with playing within the status quo but at the same time kind of swapping it up and kind of like trying something a little different and fresh and new uh definitely refreshed it for me it was just one of those things that when you first start out you're like whoa, 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 wait a second am i doing this wrong why is this not why is this not working the way that i expected it to work um, because honestly, when I first started like playtesting and I started whacking away at, um, whacking away at, you know, Billy's, I was like, oh, this is not, this is, this is not doing the thing that like the Arc of Plasma was doing. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to like, you know, throw anything under the bus, but legitimately the Arc of Plasma had a lot of, had a good chunk of, had a good chunk of crit, had a good chunk of status. Um, and at the same time, was slash based. It literally only had, I think it was, I don't know if it was puncture or impact, but it was one of those two. And then it had slash. So it was really, really focused on dealing the slash damage and having some big procs to go along with it. But, so I was like thinking that it was gonna, you know, kind of feel the same way when I used it, but no, completely, completely different. I did not want to use the same combos with it whatsoever. And I didn't kind of really want to go in and, um, 
and it, you know, play the same way that I did with the Archaplasmor. I mean, they're both hammers. They both do a great job at being hammers, but just in very, very different senses. And I kind of like the thought of mixing things up, kind of like how, um, how they mixed up sniper pistols. You know, sniper pistols weren't a thing until very, very recently, and I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, high-speed hammers should necessarily be a thing, but it's definitely nice to have that option and nice to kind of switch things up a little bit. In fact, one of the things that I want you guys to let me know, and this will be an interesting kind of like test in the comments, um, let me know what category of weapons you would like to see them mix up. What category of weapons has a specific identity that you're like, you know what would be cool if they took this identity and they kind of changed it up and kind of flipped it on its head. Go ahead and leave that in the comments below for me. Just just get creative with it. Let me see how you guys feel. But that about does it for now. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll chat with you guys next time. Bye bye